I'll read the para first entirely and then we'll come back to it. So, what? OK, before we start reading, what is Sri discussing in this paragraph? He is replying actually to Gandhi, who is saying that physical violence is not acceptable morally. OK, physical violence is wrong. I reject it. Ahimsa is my principle and that's the ultimate. In fact, for him, it was so ultimate that he was willing to even call off the, the, the effort for, you know, the national um, uh, revolution for India's independence. Two times he did that. Okay, as soon as there was some bit of uh, violence somewhere, particularly the incident is very famous in uh, history, Chora Chori, the po police station in, uh, in Uttar Pradesh somewhere. You know, there, there was a policeman had fired on some people and one or two had died. So the villagers got furious and burned down the uh, police station. And when they burned down the police station, there were 22 policemen who got burned to death. Okay? So then uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi called off the Quit India movement. He said, no, I will not accept violence. Okay, so <laughs> using Moral force is okay, according to him, but not physical force. So I'm is going to reply to that. Okay, Is it okay? Is violence okay? Not acceptable at the physical level, but it depends. Even that is acceptable, provided your violence is not caused by anger, hatred, rancor. We have said that many times. If you are seeing something that has to be destroyed and you do that without any wrong emotions, there's no problem. Suppose the tree has grown old. OK, OK, suppose the tree has gone old. You have to cut it down and use it. OK, and plant a new one. You are destroying life, but destroying life is. In fact, there is this famous example of euthanasia. OK, when a horse gets uh, lame, OK, a racing horse, they often just shoot it so that it's relieved of its misery. So whether it's right or wrong is another question, but the question of violence is there. Okay? Destruction is not necessarily something negative. We have said that many times. So <clears throat> is moral force, is that OK? That's what we are going to discuss. Very interesting discussion and very subtle. So let's have a look at that. OK, <clears throat> moreover, I'm reading the whole para first. OK, moreover, Every time we use soul force, we raise a great force of karma against our adversity, adversary, the after movements of which have, we have no power to control. Note that, okay? Once you start attacking someone with your soul force, okay? With your psychological force, you attack. Uh, once you have released that thing, you have no more control over it. Okay? That's the interesting part. The after movements of which we have no control to, uh, no power to control. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what you should do is only release from your being, release only soul force which is positive, love, sympathy, okay, understanding of people, the right vibrations. But if you send out the wrong vibrations, not only they will harm others, but they will also harm you by rebounding on you. So this is what is. We have no power to control. This is the thing. But even when I send out good vibrations, if I have no power to control those vibrations, no problem because it's going to do only good to the world. <laughs> OK, so I go to the next one. Vashishtha uses soul force against the military violence of Vishwamitra and armies of Huns and uh, Shakas and Pallavas hurl themselves on the aggressor. The very quiescence and passivity of the spiritual man under violence and aggression awakens the tremendous forces of the world to a retributive action. Retribution is revenge. OK, so a retributive action. So <coughs> the very quiescence and passivity of the spiritual man under violence and aggression awakens the tremendous force of the world to a retributive action. What is he saying? He is saying that if you throw a weapon at a man who is a spiritual man and he is absolutely calm and quiet, that weapon that you have thrown comes back to you. It hits you back. 
it's retribution. It takes its own revenge. The man is so calm and quiet and so solid that it will not affect him. Okay. I had a very interesting incident with Mother said was there was a, a storm raging in Pondicherry. It was a cyclone. No, November, December normally used to have cyclones quite often in the 1940s and uh, even later on. Afterwards, it shifted to May also. We had a cyclone in May. But this cyclone was so strong, Mother said, okay, Sirmno's Zoom is all windows are open. Let me go and close them. Okay. And when she went to close the windows, what did she see? She saw that not a single drop of water has entered the room. <laughs> so, okay. So the very calm and quiet and solidity of Sirmno's consciousness did not allow anything to enter even into his room, let alone into him. But even the room, it did not enter. So this is what Shandu is saying. When you throw violence and aggression against the spiritual man, okay, they, it becomes, it rebounds back on you. So to say that moral force has no effect and it's good is not valid. Okay, That's exactly what he's saying. The very quiescence and passivity of the spiritual man under violence and aggression awakens the tremendous forces of the world to a retributive action. Retribution, you understand, no? Okay. Then, and it may even be more merciful to stay in their path, though by force, though who represent evil, than to allow them to trample on until they call down on themselves a worse destruction than we would ever think of inflicting. Okay. So, and it may even be more merciful to stay in their path. That means you return, okay. though by force. You don't need to. <coughs> you don't need to um, remain. You know, of course, if you can do that, it is wonderful. But it, everybody is not in that consciousness of solidity, you know. So it may be even more. Uh, this is very obvious that Shrimdo also says that when you are attacked, okay, and you are in a normal condition, you have the full right to protect yourself. <laughs> and it may even be more merciful to stay in their path, though by force, though those who represent evil, than to allow them to trample on until they call down on themselves a worse destruction than we would have ever thought of inflicting. So it is better to, <laughs> to, um, to fight back. That's what he's saying. Because if you don't fight back, the effect, the karmic effect on those who are doing harm to you will be even more solid. A worse destruction, he's saying. Okay? It's a very subtle point which you have to grasp very clearly. So, Violence is violence. It depends with what attitude you are doing. It is not enough that our hands, own hands should remain clean and our souls unstained for the law of strife and destruction to die out of the world. Okay. If you think that you will remain calm and quiet and I am not uh, subject to violence, that is not enough, Sri is saying. That will not remove violence from the world. Okay. Much so. Uh, I'm reading the sentence again. It is not enough that our own hands should remain clean and our souls unstained for the law of strife and destruction to die out. Even if you are individually perfectly free of any violence in yourself, that is not going to uh, remove the violence in the world. That's what he's saying. Out of the world. That which is its root must first disappear out of humanity. So, what is the root of violence? Anger, hate, okay, the, all these things, rancor, these are the things. That must be uprooted. It must disappear. So, when that happens, suppose in a very supermental race, nobody will have these things. So, there will be no violence at that level. But if you are at a normal level of humanity, violence can never be removed. Because you are at a level where violence and all these uh, dualities is uh, a fact of life. The duality, you are subject to the dualities. You are something, you are saying something? Okay, then I continue. No? Uh, 
much less will mere immobility and inertia unwilling to use or incapable of using any kind of resistance evil abrogate the law okay? if you are quiet and you remain uh, immobile and this is exactly what we saw in that film gandhi okay remember he is saying let the police beat us i don't mind i will be willingly i will be beaten okay but i will not hit back okay that was his idea of violence so i'm just answering to that much less will mere immobility let the police hit me i don't mind you remember in, if you have seen that film you will see that they were being beaten solidly and they were not really reacting okay and inertia so there are two things mere immobility is one and also out of inertia you are unwilling to use or incapable of using any kind of resistance evil that is not going to remove the law of violence and himsa in the world okay inertia tamas indeed injures more than the rajasic principle of strife which at least creates more than it destroys so there you are so he is now talking of the tamasic principle and the um, the uh, vital principle of tam uh, rajas and also the mental principle of morality so you you can't apply the moral law and saying that i will remain calm and quiet and i will not react it will not have its effect in the vital world and in the uh, physical world it will not have very clearly he said okay tamas indeed tamas is at physical level indeed injures more than can the rajasic principle of strife it is better to hit back <laughs> good it's very interesting what he is saying let's look at something okay so <clears throat> at the physical level you are incapable of hitting back or you are capable of hitting back we'll take up one by one in the physical case the vital um, the vital uh, the rajasic case and the sattvic case let's take up all one by one at the physical level i am incapable of hitting somebody comes and gives me a slap okay. i am very dis disturbed i don't like it i am very disturbed and i am insulted but i am unable to hit back okay that's one thing or out of inertia okay i can't hit back that is not going to help you it's not going to remove the law of ahimsa from the world that's what said this now if you come to the vital level you have the power to hit back it is better to hit back because if you don't hit back the also again the law of ahimsa is not going to disappear from the world you may individually be free of it but the ahimsa will not disappear it will remain the ahimsa the violence at the moral level also said they saying he has discussed that right in the beginning it is better to protect yourself and hit back otherwise the law of karma will have its effect and the destruction will be much more okay it's quite subtle and you have to read that carefully again once more and see what he is saying but in other words simply ahimsa applying ahimsa universally at all levels is not valid that's what he's saying very clearly okay so tamas indeed injures more than the rajasic principle of strife which at least creates more than it destroys therefore so far as the problem of the individual's action goes his abstention that means he does not hit back from strife and its inevitable concomitant destruction in their more gross and physical form may help his own moral being individually you may benefit by keeping quiet but it leaves the slayer of creatures unabolished the violence in the enemy doesn't go away and it will take effect somewhere else it will become even more this we see in the physical world also okay take the arabs and the uh, israelis the israelis were um, persecuted with great amount of force and they were unable to do anything okay but now what's happening now they have a, a country and they are also doing the same to the uh, arabs okay so the violence does not disappear just by remaining quiet or calm through inability or even through ability to remain calm in the next one he is going to why yeah tell me rangada why slayer is with s capital oh acha acha okay because he is representative Anywhere and everywhere. That's right. 
He is not one particular slayer. Okay. He becomes symbolic of the violence that is uh, the principle of slaying. That's why he puts an S. It becomes symbolic. Okay. He represent. He is a representative of all slaying. Na? Uh, hello. Yes, tell me. You know, can you elaborate a little? I'm very ignorant about Vashishtha, Vishwamitra, Han, Shakas, Pallavas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I also skipped that because I had gone through it, but I don't remember. Okay. So these are all there in the Puranas, and uh, maybe uh, maybe Lakshmi knows about it. But I would ask you to check in the internet the stories. Okay. <laughs> I remember reading it. I'm yes. not sure how to interpret it. No, uh, sorry, Dada. Uh, this is. Uh, are we reading from essays on Gita? Yes, oh. yes. Essays on the oh. Gita. Yes. Uh, page number, sir. Page number. Uh, Forty-three. Yeah, oh, okay. The page. Oh. Forty-three or thirty. Forty. One of the two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, on Saturday, I think that was Lakshmi speaking. Yes, yes, Dada, it's me. Speaking. Okay, so on Saturdays we have essays on your uh, screen on the uh, Skype that is not mentioned. But Friday, yes. Saturday was earlier. It used to be yeah. synthesis, and yes. essays of the Gita is not mentioned. <laughs> no, I mean you mentioned it is Sri Aurobindo's reply to a disciple. Then I just wondered if you are reading from Letters on Yoga. So I think you said that no, somewhere. No, no, that is different. Maybe. Uh, no, we are discussing the. Uh, what he is saying here in the essays on the Gita only. Okay, yeah, okay. got it. Yeah, got it, please. Got it. Thank you. Okay. This is what basically Sandeep is saying. Don't think that physical violence, restraining yourself from physical violence is going to cure the problem of force and violence wrongly used in the world. That is not going to do. In fact, he says very clearly in one place, until the debt to Shiva is paid, you cannot have the calm and quiet of Vishnu. <laughs> so, in other words, only when man cures himself from all wrong vibrations and becomes something much better in that community, in that community of supramental beings who are free of rancor, anger and hate, there there will be no violence. But those who are in the tamasic world, in the vital world, and even the mental world, violence will remain and continue to remain. Okay. In the Life Divine, in the last uh, chapter, he discusses what are the things that will disappear in the supramental race. War is certainly one of them. And it may be replaced by a very subtle replacement, which is emulation. In other words, competition. Like in sports, okay, it's a milder, very, very mild form of violence. <laughs> Psychologically, you want to win over the others, but there should be no jealousy and there should be no sense of superiority. Only you do the best you can, but emulation may remain. He said it's a very interesting thing, but that's something quite different, okay. So, now, so I told you this is a very a subtle thing, read it again and see whether you understand what he's saying and maybe that uh, Vishwamitra story okay it may help okay you go to the internet and check that the Pallava the, uh, he has given several instances the military violence of Vishwamitra and Vashishtra okay uses sword force against the military violence of Vishwamitra I remember Vishwamitra got angry with Vashishtra and and uh, tried to uh, attack him but Vashishtra did not uh, use, <laughs> did not re uh, re retaliate. That is the story. But the that, story, that, that, was, that was the story of um, being Brahmarshi and um, Rajarshi and Devarshi, no? Uh, he wanted him to call him. Huh? You will have to check that. I am not 100% sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there was also this story where Vasista has the Kamadhenu and Vishwamitra wanted to take it. He said, I'm the king, it should be with me. Even there, you know. That's I right. That that's was also, uh, that's that there's, there's a story with that also. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted Kama Denu. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And they had a fight. And yeah, Vishwamitra yeah. was still Rajasik because he was a king who became a yogi. Yes. Yeah, right. That's the one. That's the story. But you check the story and see its relevance to what we've been saying here. Okay. So we can go to the next para. Uh, after we finish, uh, I would like a word with uh, Archanadi. Archanadi, after we finish, I'd like to speak to you. After we finish. Okay. Okay, Randa. Now, we read the next one. One of you has to read. Shall I read? Yes, do that. For the rest. For the rest, the whole of human history bears witness to the inexorable vitality and persistent prevalence of this principle in the world. It is natural that we should attempt to palliate, palliate to lay stress on other aspects. Strife and destruction are not all. There is the saving principle of association and mutual help, as well as the force of dissociation and mutual strife, a power of love, no less than a power of egoistic self-assertion. An impulse to sacrifice ourselves for others, as well as the impulse to sacrifice others to ourselves. But when we see how these have actually worked, we shall not be tempted to gloss over or ignore the power of their opposites. Association has been worked not only for the mutual help, but at the same time for defense and aggression. To strengthen us against all that attacks or resist in the struggle for life. Association itself has been a servant of war, egoism, and the self-assertion of life against life. Life itself has been constantly a power of death, especially the love of good and the love of God, as embraced by the human ego, have been responsible for much strife, slaughter, and destruction. Self-sacrifice is great and noble, but at its height, it is an acknowledgement of the law of life by death and becomes an offering on the altar of some power that demands a victim in order that the work desired may be done. The mother bird facing the animal of prey in defense of its young, the patriot dying for his country's freedom, the religious martyr or the martyr of an idea, these in the lower and the superior scale of animal life are highest examples of self sacrifice And it is evident to what they bear witness. Again, a very, very subtle and very interesting discussion. This discussion is also had in the Life Divine in the chapter, The Ascent of Life. So it's a very uh, difficult uh, chapter, but once you get the hang of it, you understand. Okay. This, <clears throat> what is um, uh, love and the opposite of love, hatred. Okay. Slowly, actually it becomes, it rises to other levels. So that's what he's discussing, but it, it's a huge discussion. It's a big para, a big chapter, the ascent of life. So we'll try and go through here and understand to the best of our capacity. Now, <clears throat> he has told you about the, basically his point is that simply thinking that ahimsa is the ultimate principle of life is not valid. Okay. Himsa also is a, a power of the divine. Okay, violence and force. I won't use the word violence, I'll say force. Force can express itself in violence, which is negative as well as positive. Okay. When you want to destroy a house to build a new one, it is not negative, it is positive. You are destroying the old so that you get the new. In fact, yoga is all about that. You're going on destroying your old nature and bringing in new nature. Okay. So destruction is absolutely essential in some parts. It's the attitude with which one is doing that is the important part. Okay. So this is what he's saying. And it's valid at all the levels. So now we read the para that we've just read. The first sentence. For the rest, the whole of human history bears witness to the inexorable vitality and persistent prevalence of this principle in the world. Okay. Human history is telling us that war has not disappeared at all. And even in modern times, we thought that after the Second World War, everybody will have sense pumped into them and they will feel that impossible 
war is too 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 dangerous and particularly after the atomic uh, thing with one bomb killed 100000 people and completely destroyed a whole city not one city two cities hiroshima and nagasaki so war is impossible you thought but what's happening today again russia has attacked uh, ukraine and the whole world is now almost on the verge of a third world war in fact many many are warning about that because europe is not going to give in and europe is going to retaliate and it then becomes a world war because on the other hand china is waiting to take back taiwan so war has not disappeared that's what should be saying in this sentence for the rest the whole of human history bears witness to the inexorable vitality and persistent prevalence of this principle in the world principle of what violence and yeah that's right himsa okay it then cannot disappear inexorable vitality full of energy and will not disappear persistent prevalence it continues to be prevalent to exist it is natural that we should attempt to palliate the word palliate means to give a temporary relief okay? we try to say no 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 war we should not have any war but simply saying that and trying to do it is not going to cure it's only a temporary cure okay <coughs> palliative is something that gives you temporary relief it doesn't remove the disease altogether it is natural that we should attempt to palliate to lay stress upon other aspects okay let us not think of hate and crime let us think of the positive maybe that will save okay to lay stress on other aspects now he is discussing the principle of love and strife okay i'll give you just a glimpse of what he is saying in that in the uh, chapter in life divine okay strife and destruction are not all there is a saving principle of association and mutual help as well as the force of dissociation and mutual strife in other words destruction and construction both are there all the time in the world the duality is exists in the physical world you must remember that okay <clears throat> and that also we have seen how we repeat that again again and again when when the divine is creating the world he creates infinitely so when he creates one particular thing he doesn't create only one intensity of it he creates a whole range of intensity for it. less and more less lesser least and more more most it goes on so the two opposites of the same vibration become seem to be opposites but they are not opposites if war exists peace also will be there if you think that only peace exists in the physical world you are wrong there will be war also the only thing is when you go to another level of consciousness and only peace exists then it is possible but not in the physical world strife and destruction are not all there is a saving principle of association and mutual help now association we can see at many many levels okay at an individual level i may want to become friends with somebody is that friendship going to last forever not necessarily sometimes the best of friends become enemies okay and in in uh, at a national level okay nato okay nato was the north atlantic treaty organization that's an association i for mutual defense we are coming together okay so force of so if association is there and mutual help is there as well as the forces of dissociation and mutual strife a power of love no less than a power of egoistic self assertion love is a movement that goes outwards it is positive but there is something that goes inwards in a limited manner love is something that expands and goes outwards okay positively but there is an opposite movement also which comes in okay and that is you restrict yourself to yourself let's say ego i don't want to give i want to only take okay that's a egoistic self assertion both are always there in the physical world that's why in this exaggeration of only one principle will not work you have to be very realistic and see that both exist okay so what happens an impulse to sacrifice ourselves for others 
as well as the impulse to sacrifice others to ourselves. Okay. This is also there. Okay. So, <clears throat> when you are sacrificing, what is happening? There is violence. <laughs> so the very fact that you want to love also breeds violence. It's a very subtle thing, but remember that. Okay, very interesting what he said. The very fact that I want to associate with others, okay, at this level, the law of dualities prevails in the physical world. It's very subtle. You will have to think about it. The power of love, no less than the power of egoistic self-esteem, an impulse to sacrifice ourselves for others, as well as the impulse to sacrifice others to ourselves. But when we see how these have actually worked, we shall not be tempted to gloss over or ignore the power of their opposites. Love and hate are both always together. Simply love will not remove hate in the world. That's what he's saying. They always go together. That's the law of dualities. But it's not true for all levels. It's true only at the physical level. Physical, vital, mental level, it is valid. And you will not be tempted to gloss over. You remember we discussed um, uh, false optimism, okay? A shallow optimism. Oh, if I love others, others also will love me. It doesn't work that way, <laughs> okay? We'll be, not be tempted to gloss over and ignore the power of the opposites. When we see very calmly, quietly, we will see that so long as human love exists, okay? human hate also will exist. And if human hate exists, it will also engender human love. Only the divine love will eliminate the other thing, not in the physical world. So, association has been worked not only for mutual help, but at the same time for defense and aggression. Now note that, very interesting. When I am associating with others, okay, association and love of others, I am uh, making a treaty not only to protect myself, but also to attack others. Okay. Very interesting what he's saying. Okay. Now, for instance, in the physical world, in the political field, China is aggressing. So we have made a what's called a quad. Okay. America, Australia, England, and India. Okay. They have come together to quad to counter the possible violence of China against Taiwan. So both are engendering. Okay? One, the possibility of violence and hate engenders the opposite. But when the opposite, that means the love and association also comes, okay? then the other also comes. <laughs> they are always together. Association has been worked out not only really for mutual help, but at the same time for defense and aggression. To strengthen then us, wait one minute, yeah, strengthen us against all that attacks or resists in the struggle for life. Association itself has been a servant of war. There you are. Association is something positive. Okay. I have a mutual pact with another country saying that we will support each other. But this supporting each other is good. So you are, it's a question of uh, coming together, uh, friendship and association but that also you are ganging up on others that also is there okay association itself is a servant of war egoism and self-assertion of life against life love itself has been constantly the power of death they always go together okay the very famous story of romeo and juliet shows that love itself has been constantly a power of death, especially the love of good and love of God as embraced by the human ego has been responsible for much strife, slaughter, destruction. Very clear. Uh, two examples. One is the Crusades. The so-called love of God okay, made them go and try to convert others. And the other case is Islam. Their love of God, of Allah, is actually misguiding them to attack others and kill others. Love is becoming hate. <laughs> so that's what we are saying. Okay, you may say that their love is faulty, but that's precisely the problem. Okay, 
that's precisely human love is faulty at all levels however pure it may be human love can never be absolutely divine it has to turn into divine love love in the human love there is always a defect and it will engender the opposite okay. very clear also you can see i mean very easy examples when a boy falls in love with a girl okay it is love but it is defective love and when the girl doesn't respond what does he do he either murder murders her or throw acid on her face so that's exactly what they say we shall not be tempted to gloss over okay we will be very calmly quietly we will look at the dualities that both are invariably linked together okay. you have to see that but this is only at the human level where imperfection is there the only way to cure this is to go to a higher level where the duality is disappear when the duality is disappear there is only the positive aspects are left and that also there is a gradation okay only at the highest level is totally everything cured not even at the spiritual level okay? not even at the spiritual level let alone the moral moral level moral level certainly not you don't cure anything love itself has been constantly a power of death especially the love of good and the love of god is embraced as embraced by the human ego have been responsible for much strife slaughter destruction self sacrifice is great and noble but at its highest is an acknowledgement of the law of life by death okay you are killing yourself for the sake of love okay so that also you have to see okay it's very uh, interesting but the two always go together your love of your own children you are sacrificing yourself you are causing death to yourself it may be death to others but you are also causing death to yourself the two principles go together you have to think a little impersonally to understand what he is saying okay self sacrifice is great and noble that's fine but it is causing death <laughs> okay so self sacrifice is great and noble but at its highest it's an acknowledgement of the law of life by death life and death always go together and becomes an offering on the altar of some power that demands a victim in order that the work desired may be done the mother bird facing the animal of prey in defense of its young the patriot dying for his country's freedom the religious martyr or the martyr of an idea these in the lower and superior scale of animal life are highest examples of self sacrifice and it is evident to what they bear witness okay now the martyr of an idea okay very interesting the example immediately comes to mind of martin luther king the negro who was fighting against racism in america and he was wanting a universal uh, principle of love he didn't want the uh, downgrading and the degradation of the negroes and his attitude was very perfect he modeled himself on gandhi's idea of peace and non violence but what happened to him <laughs> he was murdered okay so even the martyr of an idea okay the two always go together love and life and death go together that's what we say so huge discussion about this and last time also we had this to a great extent we had this discussion there should be no shallow optimism a very narrow and shallow optimism is not true you have to very calmly quietly look at the physical world and see its defects simply saying i am sai is the ultimate principle will not work it will not solve any problem okay so we have uh, it's 8:30 we have got 5 minutes we can read one more para it's a very small para we can read it but if we look at after results so shall we read yes one of you has to read i will read okay go ahead but if we look at <clears throat> but if we look at after results an easy optimism becomes even less possible see the patriot dying in order that his country may be free and mark that country a few decades after the lord of karma has paid the price of the blood and the suffering that was given you shall see it in its turn an oppressor 
an exploiter and conqueror of colonies and dependencies, devouring others that it may live and succeed aggressively in life. The Christian martyrs perish in their thousands, setting soul force against empire force that Christ may conquer. Christianity prevail. Soul force does triumph. Christianity does prevail, but not Christ. The victorious religion becomes a militant and dominant church and a more fanatically persecuting power than the creed and the empire which it replaced. The very religions organize themselves into powers of mutual strife and battle together fiercely to live, to grow, to possess the world. Yeah. Again, we'll give several examples of what I'm saying here. They are after results, okay? Once the war has taken place, what about the after results, okay? That's interesting what he's saying. And he's saying easy optimism. We have been discussing that, okay? A shallow optimism. Oh, everything is fine in the world. God is there. How can there be anything wrong, okay? I am sorry, it's a wonderful principle and it will, it will certainly conquer. We often hear this. Love can conquer everything. Okay? It does not necessarily follow. Of course, it does to a certain extent. Everything is relative in the physical world. But love is not going to. There will be many people who will hate you. <laughs> so, okay, so. But if we look at after results, an easy optimism becomes even less possible. See the patriot dying in order that his country may be free and mark that country a few decades after the Lord of Karma has paid the price of blood and the suffering that was given. Okay, We can give two examples of this. There are many examples, but one is very clearly Israel. Okay, Israel was persecuted for thousands of years. They had to suffer tremendous. Okay? Even today, they are looked down upon. Okay? But they have now the power to hit back. And they are hitting back very solidly. Okay? So this is the, the aggressed, the one who has been aggressed, the one who has been the sufferer, he becomes the aggressor later on. I'll give you another very interesting example in South Africa. Okay? In South Africa, the blacks were absolutely dominated and even ill-treated. But what happened? They, they have come into power now. And they are very, you don't know this perhaps, but they are infiltrating the whites. They are taking away their properties by force, not law. Okay. So this is also happening. So it turns around. <laughs> so this is, the, so this is what is happening everywhere. That's what I'm very pointing out. Okay. You can see it in its turn, an oppressor, an exploiter and a conqueror of colonies and dependencies devouring others, that it may live and succeed aggressively in life. Okay. The karmic law is ever present. Look at the colonialism. Okay. It was such a horrible thing. Okay. So, but now what's happening? The very law that they suppress the others, look at uh, what is happening in uh, Europe. Okay. The Muslims are invading all the countries. And there is a very interesting uh, analysis by a Czech scientist who says that the many countries in uh, Europe will get Islam Islamized, okay, if you are not careful, they will take their revenge. So uh, that's another subject altogether, but I'm just mentioning it, okay. You can uh, see on the net there is a very interesting um, uh, description of what happens when you allow the Muslims to have their say, you go on conceding, 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 and it leads to great dangers. Okay. The Christian, and an Indian becoming Prime Minister of England. Yes. And not only that, I tell you, many, many mayors, okay, in the towns there are mayors. Yes. Many, many, many of them are Muslims now. And slowly what they do, they say, you must allow us our form of worship. No, we must have masjids. So we allow them to build masjids. Then they say, you must allow us to use loudspeakers and insist that our prayers should reach everybody. Okay, that's the next thing they do. Then they will say, we want halal meat. Okay, and so you go on considering one by one, one by one, one. Then they will say, we want the Sharia law. Then you allow that. Okay, and then what happens? Slowly, 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 they spread. 
okay they spread and they completely it has happened in syria and it has happened in um, lebanon belgium these two countries were christian countries they have been completely islamized islam has conquered them so this is what is being warned okay so it's very interesting what should be saying here but if you see the physical world you will get absolutely many many examples of this okay. in belgium yeah there are so many muslims that now they have formed their own political party and they have put up a candidate to vote and obviously the candidate will win because he is from a totally muslim locality yes so now they are scared yeah they, that's right they don't follow the belgium culture or anything and they are forcing sharia law that's and right if you have a muslim representative who's elected <laughs> life becomes terrible for them because they will spread whole belgium will be ruled by muslims exactly that is what they has been warned by and uh, one who has very look carefully looked at history he is a czech scientist okay and he has analyzed and very carefully warned that in a uh, unless you awake and that's why the internet today in india is full of um, videos and uh, youtube uh, videos warning the indians and the particularly the hindus to wake up okay don't be passive you wake up and understand the danger that is there okay. this is exactly what they do and their intention very clearly they have announced that our in intention is to make islam the world culture we want everyone all the others have to die particularly their anger is now against uh, the west in america particularly and india also their whole idea is they teach in the madrasas that you must hate the kafir this is a they are teaching they are taught to hate the kafirs it is their duty to eliminate them from the face of the earth <laughs> so then what do you do so they are saying you have to hit back okay it is more merciful to hit back than not to do that <laughs> that's more merciful i note <laughs> interesting okay because mercy and passivity and violence always gender and gender each other they are never exclusive they are always linked very very strongly together okay i'll finish the uh, paragraph we are past our time but i'll just finish the paragraph okay the christian martyrs perish in their thousands setting soul force against empire force that christ may conquer christianity prevail soul force does soul force does triumph christianity does prevail but not the christ the actual attitude is not there it's all the wrong attitude the victorious religion becomes a militant and dominant church and a more fanatically persecuting power than the creed and the empire which it replaced the very religious organizations or the very religions organize themselves into powers of mutual strife and battle together fiercely to live to grow to possess the world so all these arguments to justify the kurukshetra war and arjuna we go back to the gita arjuna is saying it is morally wrong to kill people so in those all arguments are showing that that's a very one sided view of things it is not true you have to be calm and quiet and look at both sides okay morality is not the last principle of truth in the world there is the other principle also yeah. Yeah. he speaks about religions uh, combining together so which religions are combining together to fight i mean no i don't think he is talking each religion separately the very religions what he is saying he is talking mm. of christianity and islam separately the very religions organize themselves into powers of mutual strife means christianity against islam or how is it i didn't understand that properly okay okay the very religious organ uh, religions organize mm. themselves into power of mutual strife and battle against you know, together fiercely to live to grow to possess the world take christianity and uh, islam okay 
Mm-hmm. Each one is fighting the other in Europe now. The very religions organize themselves. On the one hand, there is the Islam, and the other side, there is Christianity. Okay. No, battle together means what? Oh. Tarikadi. <laughs> Tarikadi, I feel this is a continuation of the previous line in which uh, sentence. She's saying that the religions. Yeah. Oh, internet must be poor here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, how can I you, don't can you hear I don't feel that religions will amalgamate themselves to fight others. It is that each religion individually will want to possess the world. Now, Christianity. Uh-huh. Did that, that is what he's talking about. It was on the yeah. rise, and exactly. now Christianity is on the fall in Europe. So now Islam is on the rise. Mm-hmm. So each, the two religions will never amalgamate. They are each one fighting with, for its own right. Uh, Arika, they yeah. bat- battle together does yeah. not mean coming together in a common cause. It means okay. coming together means fighting against each other. Uh-huh. That's the meaning okay. of together. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Battle together means against each other, not with each other. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes the language is a little complicated, but here mm-hmm. very clearly, Christianity and Islam are not coming together to fight something else. They are yeah. fighting among themselves. Mm-hmm. Together. Together okay. means he is also fighting and the other also is fighting. <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. Together in time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not in okay. space. Mm-hmm. Okay, we stop here now. Okay. So, okay. So. okay. Merci, Rangada. Merci, Merci. 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 Mer